Welcome to Inside Out Boards with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to the new subs, thank you for subscribing. Um, okay, so we're going to get back on this little marinated mariner. This little... Marinated Mariner 15. She had some issues. I had to fix them. I'm not sure did we get it in my last video I pulled. Well, we're going to see in this video. We're going to see. And then, we're going to get on another one. Sure as it's a beautiful day out there, and it is a beautiful day out there. In fact, this whole week has been sunny and 35, sunny and 40. I think it got up yesterday to like 42, sunny, no wind, just gorgeous. And uh, so, um, but we're going to finish up this little mare, I hope. And if we do, we'll bring the next victim. The next victim? I need a victim. We'll bring the next victim in. And the one I'm thinking on bringing in here belongs to yours truly. I own it. And so, um, last season, I didn't do a lot of, say, 35s, 40s in that area. And lo and behold, that's what everybody was looking for. So this year, I've done the, a couple of those, you know, the Yamaha Enduros and stuff, and got those ready. And then I'm going to do this one that you'll see, get it ready for sale so that I have some. Because people came around looking for them, and I just, I spent the winter before last season mostly doing the smaller kickers. So I need to get some mid-range stuff out there on the rack for sale before spring comes. You on a status. So, let's get started. That's when I noticed that the transom clamps, one of them's broke and completely missing. The other one is there. Completely stuck and froze it up. So I'll drill a couple holes, shoot some looby dooby dooby in there, let it soak overnight, see if I can at least get that one. There might be enough left of both, I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's see what we got. I don't know. Alright. So. Eh, well, I don't know. But this one's completely froze. So I'll drill a hole here, here, maybe one in at an angle, whatever. One in through here, one through there. And see if I can get some lube in there. And, and we'll go that route. Okay, so I drilled a hole here. Somewhere in there. Then I drilled a hole here. In there somewhere. No, I did. Just gotta find it. There it is. Comes up. Same here. Alright, you're right, you're right. Alright, you're right. Then you can take the tri flow, squirt in there, squirt in there. Now, if you watch, when I squirt it in here, you should see it come out this other hole over here. And I didn't go all the way through, it's just going around the threads. See that? Here, probably better if I went this way. Watch right here. So, you know, the flow is getting through. So I'll let that sit overnight and I should be able to spin those tomorrow. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Make the hole a little bigger. Like 
so you can see he's already got good turning on that one unstucky on that one I'm just gonna make a jury rig hose clamp thing for it so he can tighten it ain't gonna do nothing special remember this old guy is my crab man and he's gonna probably pay me with crab and not cash so I'm not taking the high dollar parts bolt washer washer and eye lock and that will sure beat what he had going is that the right size? Good enough. There you go. That is good enough for this guy. There you go. So now we got clamps.
All right, T. This little motor, somewhat abused. Um, the gear shift in the tiller, tiller throttle gear shift, give it gas. If that's your thing, good. If I owned it, go look at my mod on these Mercury tillers in the shift. To me, it's a much better way to go. Um, for one, people who aren't used to this, I, I actually find the tiller shift throttle all combined in one unit dangerous to me. Um, if you get somebody that's never operated one of these motors or is not used to it, they start it and it tries to come to life and they go, oh, it's going to die. So the first thing they try and do is rev it and give it some gas. And of course, that puts it in gear and off you go. And out the boat you go, in my opinion. I'm not a fan of it. I understand sailboaters like it when they have a real high transom and they're coming into harbor. Arbor? When you're coming into the Abba. When you're coming into the ABBA, they like to be able to reach over and just click it in gear. I get it, but uh, I'm not saying it it ain't a good system. I'm just saying that uh, I prefer the shift mod that you can do to this engine. It's nothing I invented. This motor comes in two styles, both in Mercury and Mariner. It has the shift in the tiller. It has the shift off to the side. In fact, this one is ported for that. You can see it. Spin you around. Right here's where you would put the shift handle. You take that out, stab it in there. I've got a video on all that. Whoops, sorry. My thing's spinning. So right here, you would lift this out, put your shift handle and all in there. So, for me, I don't prefer it. I prefer the other way round. I like to have a shift handle, a handle, forward, neutral, rev it, rin, 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 reverse.
righty, all righty, all righty, all righty. There she is. She's pretty clean too. I took this one in a while back. Right. Let me see. Yeah. She's not a seed, she's just a little stiff. But uh yeah, I took it in oh, I don't know, a year ago. And just sitting out there. We'll put out the plugs real quick. Shoot some little triflo in this baby. Yeah, it's actually a really clean motor. I show you, I show you. Good looking thing. Now, this motor I'm pretty sure was originally a tiller operated motor. See what we got for plugs. They look clean, they look fairly new. They have been run. And they are the QL78YC Champions. L78YC. And this one's QL78YC. But uh, I'm not really that unfamiliar with these motors. And they are a little bit on the special side, and I'll show you why. I show you, I show you, I show you. Okay. You said whistle fish metal for the horsepower Johnson. Ain't no space metal for ya. There we go. Get some lube on them pasty on assist. Feels feels more better. Oh. I show you, I show you, it's pretty clean. Got some broken clamps, stiff clamps. I had to fix all that. Yeah. Okay. Now I haven't touched this thing, I just brought it in. I just brought it in. Not even touch it yet. But if you look, it's really not that bad in there. Pretty clean engine, don't look all salty back here. Nice and clean over there. Everything's in order. Pretty clean, Johnson. Now, you said, but you said it was special. What's, what's special? First off, you only got half a motor. You don't, you don't even, you don't even have the lower, look at it. You don't have a motor, you have half a motor. I got that other half somewhere, I got it. I show you, I show you. But, you put the stop switch up here, like that. Look at that report. Probably just jammed up from, let's give her a little tappity tap, tap, tap. A little tappity tap. she goes sometimes you, you have to sway them when they're salty you know you just gotta sway them sometimes all right well let's all come on there might as well throw a sparky spider on there since we're pulling on it anyway the spider might as well might as well let's do that let's do that Let's do that, let's do that. Get this thing all spidered up. See if we can find this a good ground bolt. And then we got to get a, a glove, a rag, so that we don't get no hockey spocky. Actually, that's fiber plastic or whatever it is. Uh, I did it again. I'm always doing it again. Okay. Oh, my God. Ouch. It's home crow. What's up with that? Okay. Um, where are the two? Right over in here. Woohoo! 
I see Spocky. Well, I see. We got Spock both selling Daniels. But, you know, it's, she's clean, but there's salt up under that recoil. And things that need to come off. You understand us. Just give it a good spinning. Plug the in. Now let me re get my Compression gauge. Screw it in that bottom. See, I'm wondering if any oil went in this bottom when I squirted that trifold because um, I had it upside down, kind of squirting it in here, and that can is almost out. So, no oil may have went in that bottom cylinder. <laughs> Compression there, that's for sure. Okay, 150 on the bottom. Let's do the top again. 150 on the bottom with oil in it. So that's gonna be, you know, artificially high there. I just couldn't pull it over well with that. We are zero, zero. Why am I going stuck again? Top and bottom with some more tri flow in there. So, in reality, it's probably about 130 ish. So, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. So, we got Sparky, both cylinders. Okay, now I want to show you. What's kind of unusual about these here mug tiles? Okay. So, there it is. A Johnson Seahorse. 40 horsepower. Heck, I don't even know what year it is yet. Let me find out. Let's go. Let's go. It is a. It is a 1994 ER. It's a 94 40 horsepower Johnson Seahorse. And you say, yeah, but you said there was something, you know, and you know, when? Here it is. What does that say? Did somebody just stick that there? What's the deal? Well, here's what I've been told. I do not know this. I've just been told this. Over on the mainland in Alaska, they have the wonderful and great Kenai River, which is one of, it, well it is, it's the most heavily fished river in Alaska and the fisheries that they do over there is a dip net fishery they ride up and down the river in their boats they have a big old giant 
net that they kind of they they do they 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 have the handle of the net has a oar lock on it they put the handle in the oar lock just like it was an oar then they raise the handle of the net in the boat so the net goes down in the water then they run a line from the front of the net up to a bow cleat all right so then they put up and down the river and when a salmon goes in the net they'll feel it start to shake they just push down on the handle up comes the net then in the oar lock they swivel it around into the boat and take it out well they put a horsepower restriction on the Kenai River and a couple other rivers over there I, I believe I believe the Kenai and the Susitna rivers both have um, these restrictions on them for a maximum of 35 horsepower so there are shops that you can go in there over there and they will rejet these 40s supposedly and do a couple other things um, to reduce the horsepower by five horsepowers making it a legal motor to run up and down the Kenai now the deal is you know th that looks like they went to hanky hardware and just bought you know a couple stickers but you can see this is one sticker there's no splice here that's a 35 sticker so um and i have seen it i've had a couple of these come in over the years and i've seen it painted on there professionally so they're supposed to rejet the carbs and then i've seen it on the true what i would consider real kenai river 3540 um, I had a fellow from Kenai who owned the motor and brought it to me. I have videos of that motor. It's an Evinrude 3540, and it, it caused me a lot of problems. But I, I finally got it right. Um, and on his motor, I said, what's up with that? Well, right here somewhere in the propellers, they had holes drilled. A couple holes in each, right in the, you know, in this crevice of the propeller. They had like two holes on each fin. And then he told me that if you get stopped by fishing game over there, you better have the certificate showing the name of the shop, the modifications they did to make it 35 horsepower, and that has to be on your person in the boat. And the serial number needs to match. The serial model number needs to match um, what's hanging on your boat. So that's what's a little bit special about it. It's called the Kenai River Special. And these motors can be problematic in the fact that that fishery, these guys will spend. You got to remember, Alaska's summer days are long, very long. Um, they will spend literally 15, 16 hours going up and down that river at idle. And we know what that does to a two-stroke motor. It carbons them up. I've had these Kenai River motors come in here so bad that I had to go out there at night and do a decarb on them. Uh, they were just that gunked up. Hopefully this one won't be that way. But we don't know. We don't know. So that's what's a little bit unique about this motor. And I have had subscribers ask me... Um, have I ever seen those motors? And, well, yes, there you go. <laughs> um, and, yeah, but that motor missing half a bottom. No, it's right there. And this is originally off of Johnson. I put this lower unit on an Evinrude for a fella. Oh, God, it's been over 10 years. He has since passed away. I ended up back with the motor. And if you look, you can see where the blue paint is scraped off. It's, it's white under there. <laughs> so I'll sand it back down and repaint it white so that it matches the Johnson. Just like I did to make it match his living room. So, that's the skinny on this little beautiful two-stroke goodness. I'll be right back. Well, you can see we got a lot to do on this 3540 Kenai Special Johnson. Um, although it is Pretty clean. Um, 
What I might do is pop like the top carb off and look in it and if it's nice and clean I'll probably just put that back on and uh, as soon as we get the lower unit snitchinated we'll probably just stick some gas. I don't even think I'll put the lower unit on it just to see if it'll run. Um, you know I'll dip the, the, the bottom of the upper leg in my tank to muffle the sound a little bit and we'll turn on that blower thing and see if she'll come to life. Who knows? Like I said, it's pretty clean and uh, I'm hoping that we have some good luck with this one and it's not all fouled up like a lot of them Kenai motors are. So, yeah, she's uh, got a lot to go on it. And you say, well, 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 you know, other than putting a lower unit and make sure it's got a good water pump, what, what's the deal? Well, the deal is I want it to be tiller. And it ain't no tiller. It ain't no tiller. It ain't no thriller in Manila. So we gotta make it one. So I gotta go out my pile and get a tiller that has a good cable and a rod and all that. Go the rod that goes through here, shift, shift, shift. Yeah. So we got a ways to go on this puppy. We're gonna get there. We'll get there. So. Got a lot of work to do. Got some parts I gotta source up. Um, it's already got the key switch up here. I shouldn't let that be hanging like that, should I? That's a no-no. Tear my wire. But yeah, um, we gotta get the rods, the shift rods and all that that hook into here and blah, blah. I got sanding and painting on the lower unit. I got Tiller bolts, two of them to come up with, maybe clean some carbs. Well, we just got a lot to do on it, but I think it's a worthy candidate because it's pretty clean. And uh, so, but it's getting late, this video is getting long, so as you know, that is one more. Hot from Korea. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.